Hey everyone, Bancroft here with another exciting episode of Attack on TCG, and today we are doing Dragon Ball Super. You know, eventually we'll go over to another card game, but until that time, it is Dragon Ball Super. And I would have to say, I'm super excited for this particular deck profile, um, since we pulled the, I think I was the one who actually opened the uh, promo pack for it, yeah. um, but... That being said, it is the only card in the entire series that's a special trait for Evil Incarnated. From the Janimba Saga, Janimba! Alright, so this is the exit earlier. The Promo Janimba. And what makes Promo Janimba so ridiculously awesome at the same time people just hate playing against it is that when this card attacks, you draw one card and place two cards from the top of your opponent's deck into their um, drop zone. That is ridiculous. Now, with that amazing ability, there is one catch to this deck, though. You cannot play any card um, that has an injury cost of 5 or more in this deck. It has to be anything in this deck. has to be 5 or under. That's kind of like their way of saying, hey, you can't have anything <laughs> super powerful. But guys, guys, everyone who's listening, this deck is ridiculously powerful regardless. All right, so let's get to the next feature of that. When your life is four or less, you may choose up to two of your energy and switch them to active mode and then flip this card over. That's kind of like the basis of what's been going on lately. I think for the last like two seasons or sets, it's been just uh, set two energy cards back to active. So now we got this beautiful guy, Relentless Speed Janimba. Um, I do want to apologize real quick because the lighting might be a little different today just because we only have one lamp on today. And it's actually missing its cover, so we're trying to do what we can for right now. Complications occur, but let's get past that. Now... When this card attacks, draw one card and place the top, place two cards from the top of your opponent's deck in their drop zone. So the same as the first uh, form of him, but his second feature, actually I don't even know if Janemba's a he, I should stop saying that. But regardless, Janemba's second feature is, when this card is attacked, you may place one blue card from your hand and, uh, hand, I should say, probably say place, but pretty much put it into your drop area. If you do this, negate the attack and negate the skill for duration of the game. So this is pretty much a free, well, you still have to pay one card from your hand, but practically a free negate. So if you're pushed to, your, uh, to the end, and you're like, you know what, they're pushing, they're pushing, I still have this extra negate they probably forgot about, I'm going to use this ability now. And boom, they're like, whoa. And that's how Janemba works. So, that being said, since we are playing a Janemba deck, for sure, we are playing four of the Psyche, uh, Psyche, Demon, rocking out, Psyche. That sounds about right. All right. So, cool thing about him, it's a one cost. Uh, when you play this card, choose one. Either look at the top seven cards from the top of your deck, choose up to one Janimba card among them, add that to your hand, then shuffle the deck. Uh, once you do that, oh, sorry, or you can look at the, bo the one card at the bottom of your deck, choose up to one Janimba. So, if that card happens to be Janimba, which in this uh, deck, you are setting that combo up in a sense. We'll get over that in a second. But yeah, so you can choose that one Janimba card at the bottom of your deck and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. So what you do here is that you get this card guy. Hopefully, either you already have your hand or you're trying to go through the top seven of your cards. But what you're trying to get, though, is the Childish Heart Janimba. Now, when you get that in your hand, it only costs two to actually evolve it from that original card. Or you can play three from your hand naturally. But... Once you evolve the first card into this one, it does have barrier, so it kind of keeps it alive, which is pretty nice. And for a 3 cost of 19,000, that's pretty sweet. Now, the benefit of this card is that it does have an active main, where you choose up to one Janemba card from your deck and send it to your warp. Then you shuffle your deck and place this card at the bottom of its owner's uh, deck. Then choose up to one Janemba card with an energy cost of 4 in your warp and play it. So pretty much... What you want to do is go to your deck, find a nice Janemba card with a cost of 4, throw it into your warp, put this card at the bottom of your deck, and now you have that Janemba card that you put into the warp. Now you get to play it. But before I get there, notice how we put this card at the bottom of your deck. So if you want to after that, if you had enough energy, replay this guy again, and then pull this card back from the bottom of your deck. So you see how this cycle is starting to get uh, moved along here. So there's two cards you would want to pull using this uh, active main for Child Heart Janemba. The first... Is if I'm correct, this is the promo card which we finally got. That's why we're finally doing this deck profile. But it's the Demon Sword Janimba. Now, when you bring Demon Sword Janimba out to the field, it does have a critical, does have deflect. So you can't, no one can kind of uh, 
Uh, what's the, what's the card I'm thinking of? That Cold Bloodlust. Cold Bloodlust. You cannot ruin its abilities when it comes out the field. Now, what you want to do with this card, in my opinion, is to attack your uh, opponent. They'll do critical. If they can't block it, they can't over-combo it, they'll lose one life, go straight to the drop area. Then after you do that, you place this card at the bottom of your owner's deck, then you choose up to one of your uh, opponent's battle cards, send it to its owner's warp, and then place two cards from the top of your opponent's deck and put it into the drop area. So you see how this chain of, like, endless, removing your opponent's decks, working out? That's what Geneva is so good at, especially with this leader card. It's ridiculous. But I love it. Now... If you play everything right, and when you got rid of Child Heart Geneva, and you got the chance to play this card again, and you got to evolve Child Heart Geneva, you see the cycle? We're going to our next card, which is a four cost Geneva as well. The Reality Bender Geneva, which is also a promo card. Um, he also has Deflect and Critical, but what makes this card so nice is that let's say you have nothing on your battlefield. And you have this card in your hand, but your opponent had four energy. If your opponent has four or more energy, there are, sorry, and there are battle cards on your opponent's side of the uh, battle area, and there are no battle cards in your area, reduce this card by three, which means this card only costs one blue to bring out into the field. And when you bring this card out to the field, at the end of your turn, place this card at the bottom of the owner's deck and place two cards from the top of your opponent's uh, deck and put it to drop area. So once again, you bring this guy out, you attack, they can't combo or block it, it's a crit, one from the life, straight to the drop zone, then you remove him by putting him bottom of your deck, and they get to move two more cards to top of their deck. That is the Janimba mill cycle, where you're just slowly milling their deck away to where there's nothing left. And if you remember in Dragon Ball Super, at any point, if your deck reaches, reaches zero cards, you lose. That's what you're trying to do with this deck. Now, I'm sure you've probably seen other Janimba Mills out there. Um, you're going to see some familiar cards, some different cards. So my super choice, though, super combo, is the great... I can't pick that card up. The Great Saiyan Man Town Hero. He's a sparking five. So, that being said, I am not playing any Overrealm cards in this deck. Because the goal of this one is just kind of play what I need and keep alive what is necessary. Because um, actually, a lot of times... If you evolve Janimba Child Heart from this guy right here, and then you put that Janimba at the bottom of your deck, he actually goes to your drop area. So it's just one extra card you're adding to your drop area while you're playing this. But yeah, so it's your standard super combo, but as long as you have five cards in your um, drop zone, you could draw one card for him. Pretty simple. I also play another amazing combo card, the Unbreakable Super Saiyan Son Goku. So yeah, this is actually the only other color in this deck okay I do have a one uh, two black cards no two black cards yes and then four red cards but why I have this card in my deck is because he's also another card I could draw with so I super combo him or sorry just combo him with a one cost for 10,000 power but I get to draw one card so I'm helping kind of flush things out of my deck things I need to play with which works out I have four of those just helps keep my leader or whatever card I need to keep alive alive and the last uh, what I would consider my combo of cards when it comes to uh, battle cards is the Raging Spirit Sun Gohan. What makes him so great is that when you uh, combo with this card, I can just play this card and rest as long as I have a blue leader, which I do. So you pretty much combo for one cost, and he stays on the field for rest. Uh, if my opponent hasn't attacked him by the next turn, then I can use him for another combo, or I can use him for... Uh, an attack, or just whatever I needed to use them for. Now, this deck does run two of the Kami Global um, Unifier. Is that right? Unifier. <laughs> Unifier, yeah. <laughs> Unifier. <laughs> Look, I'm a math guy. I try my best when it comes to other things. But Kami is so great because if, and only if, of course, though, if your opponent has four or more battle cards in play, uh, I pay two energy yeah two energy and by doing that all of your your and your opponent's battle cards uh with energy cost of four or less will ignoring barrier uh, are KO'd which is pretty amazing now of course if I have Janemba out there I don't want to do that just yet 
something I want to do like beginning of the term before I start bringing Janemba out, or when I send Janemba away is when I want something like this. Because I don't want Janemba getting cast away. I want to keep Janemba in my deck to constantly cycle them out. But I only play two of them. And that's, of course, if I come across, say, a, a swarm deck of some kind, or if my opponent just start, somehow is able to get a good battle side. And I'm like, I don't like that. It's a little scary. I'm going to get rid of it right there and then. Now, to protect my leader, I do also play two of the all-inspiring Intimidator, uh, Super Saiyan Blue Vegito. Now, this one's similar to a lot of the uh, Deadly Definisher scene right now. But the only difference between that and this and those is that um, as long as your leader is blue, which this one is, this card is in rest mode, it gains barrier, and your opponent's cards can't attack your leader. So no minuses to it. It stays at 20,000 at all times. Now, it is a 4 cost compared to a 3 cost. But it's honored, though, is when you play this card and you have 5 or more energy, you draw 1 card. So if I'm get to that point where I'm dropping it, I'm going to get an extra draw feature. So it's just a nice little defender on my side. Now... Let's get to my extra cards. If I'm playing Janemba, you know I'm playing for Dimension Magic, which is a counterplay when you, uh, as long as your, your leader is blue, negate the attack, then choose two of your blue energies and switch them to active. Now, if I have five cards in my drop zone, I can play this card by using my life. So I can risk going, let my, my opponent go with having no energy and active. They attack, I pay one life, I get... All, two of my energy back for whatever else I need from up to that point. So I play four of those. Now we also do play four of the Sensor Beans, which is a pretty basic card by now. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows about it. But for one cost, choose one of your cards. It gains 5,000 power for the duration of the turn. Then choose up to two of your energy and switch them to active mode. So another way to keep my energy alive, as long as I, as long as I leave one on the field. Now, I also do play four of the un Unyielding Spirit Trunks. So this is an old card, but it's still a pretty good one. During your turn, when you combo with this card and your leader is blue, choose up to one of your energies and switch it to active mode. So kind of a strategy there would be to, if I have no energies, I combo with him, and then I have a sense of being ready to go, and I use sense of being to untap two more energy. And then from that point on, if they want to continue pushing with another card, they can. I have energy now to protect myself. Now, with that energy to protect myself, they want to continue pushing. I do play four of the Mafubas. Now, this card's a very interesting card. For a two cost, and it's a counter battle card attack, negate the attack, and place this card on the attacking card. So I pretty much say, oh, you're attacking? Okay, boom, that's on your card now. And by doing so, um, at the end of the opponent's next turn, uh, place this card only and only this card, in the drop zone. But as long as this card's on that card, they can't do anything with it. They can't even uh, use its skills. So if it's a very important card they want to keep, hopefully they don't attack with it. But it was pretty cool. If you guys saw Dragon Ball Super and watched Master Roshi do it like three times or something like that, it was ridiculous. Now, that's a lot of energy cost stuff that I have in this deck. And so I do play two of the Xeno button. So just in case, for some reason, I have nothing that I can use, like I don't have unwielding trunks in my hand, and I tapped out by accident on my energy, Xeno Button will allow me to um, pretty much put all my blue energy into active mode. And that's pretty much the only energy I will be using for this deck. So, um, there's a few things, you know, I was thinking about putting the cell in there because he's also another combo for drawing. But I take that one out for the Vegitos and the Xeno Button. But guys, put in the comments what you think I should do for changes, something you would see different in this deck. But for right now, that is my build on the Janemba Mill deck. I'm looking forward to playing against Fluff something. I don't know what he has. I don't know. I don't think it's a standard chance action. It might fall to pieces if it's an Android. But we'll find out when we get to that point. Um, like always, hit that uh, subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell for more of this awesome content coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. Nerd.